full moon in Virgo on March 7th. I was meditating on this the other day and feeling into what could I bring to this conversation uh, that will help, that will serve, that not just what will help or what will serve, but what is the most valuable thing that I could bring into this conversation. Um, and that's something that I've really been leaning into strongly these last couple of months. Not just what am I called to do, but what am I most called to do? Not just what am I good at, but what am I a unique genius? What do I have a unique genius for? Not what can I do, but what most lights me up. So maybe just feeling into that for a moment, right? Like letting that energy stir in you. Like it's, it's, it's not just about like, what is my purpose? What is my, my passion? It's what is my, what is my deepest purpose? What am I most passionate about? What really inspires me? What really lights me up? Not just, oh, that puts a smile on my face. It's more like, all oh, that ignites a soul fire in my body. We are coming into this time where it is going to require our, each of our unique geniuses to shine forth in the world. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get into the astrology in a minute. <laughs> I will. The astrology is pointing toward this. It's pointing toward this, but I wanna talk greater theme for a moment and just, and, and really honor um, this greatest thing I can share with you in this moment, greatest thing that I can share with you in this moment, greatest thing. And the greatest thing that I can share with us in this moment and the greatest thing that I can offer us and point toward, right? It's just pointing toward. And it's pointing toward your greatest, your greatness, um, your unique genius, your, your blueprint. Come, your unique blueprint, who you, what you came in with, what, what you came in with karmically, right? What you came in with, your, your soul's blueprint, your true north, right? What you came in with, you came in with these beautiful potentials. Life brought more wisdom, brought more experience, helps to unfold those, helps to add to those, helps to uncover those, helps to deliver the lessons to move through the things and to open to the other things and to activate the deeper wisdoms that are coming online. And then there's this, um, there's like this, these constant choice points. So these constant choice points of, do I step into, this is enough, this is good enough, or do I go, there's so much more to me. This is good enough, my relationship is good enough, my marriage is good enough, my job is good enough, my health is good enough, or do I let, do, do I let the soul fire in me really come online? Do I let, because it comes with a little bit of pain. When we really let that truth come online, and this full moon is illuminating, it's revelatory. We've got two dark goddesses dancing on the sun and the moon. We have a dark goddess on the sun and we have a dark goddess on the moon, right? They're demanding, they're demanding. We have a square Mars. Square Mars, it's a wide square, but it's a, it, that's action. A moon, a full moon squaring Mars, a full moon in Virgo, that is embodied, that is earthy, that is bring it in, bring in the spiritual insights, bring in the mysticism, bring in your true north, bring in your purpose, bring in f more fullness. Squaring Mars, action, warrior. I'm gonna fight for my fullness. I'm gonna fight for my full potential. I'm gonna fight. I, I'm, I'm not gonna settle for enoughness. I'm not gonna settle for good enough. I'm not, I'm just, I'm not. I'm gonna be okay that it stings a little bit. I'm, I'm gonna stop numbing myself to what is painful in my life. That's hard, right? That's hard. 
I'm gonna stop numbing myself to the things that are irritating and agitating and painful. I came onto this video irritated by astrology, irritated and agitated that I had to talk about fucking Saturn going into Pisces. It's a full moon at this degree of Virgo, squaring Mars with these dark goddesses, trining Uranus. I came in agitated and irritated. But instead of going, no, 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 I have a job to do, I have a commitment to deliver a full moon video because I've been doing this for X amount of years and I show up every new moon and every full moon, Instead of doing that, I went, all right, let me let the agitation be there. Let me be frustrated as fuck by this, annoyed as fuck by this, because I can feel it's limiting my unique genius. My unique genius is not as an astrologer. I am not an astrologer at all, right? At all. <laughs> and so I went, all right, let's let it go. Let's, let's, let's let the agitation be there and let's let it be my teacher. Let's let it fuel me into, out of what was good enough. Oh, it's good enough for me to talk about the sun in Virgo and just go, no, I, I, I'm, I actually want to create an experience. I want to create change in the world. I want to create something that brings you something that shifts something in your life. I'm an alchemist, I'm a priestess, right? I wanna bring in goodness that touches you in some way, that inspires you to alchemize something within you or awaken something within you or shift something, right? To move things to higher and higher and higher states of being, to move you, to move myself, to move the world into more love-filled states, into more conscious states than what we've been eking our way through in the past. And so if my framework is a full moon video, fine, <laughs> fine. But I'm not gonna settle for, oh, this is good enough. And I'm not gonna ignore the fact that it irritates me. So I hope that that personal example, just kind of being, I don't know, put on display. <laughs> I hope that that allows you to see. I hope that that gives you, uh, inspires you to give yourself permission to go, you know what, this is agitating. You know what, this rubs me the wrong way. You know what, this is limiting for me. You know what, this doesn't, inspire the soul fire within me. This is just kind of good enough. <laughs> All right. All right, so from this deep authentic place of what else can I bring here that is the most useful? Uh, there's a couple of things. The energy of dissolving. Um, really, like this makes me want to cry because it can be so beautiful. Um, around this full moon in this moment of time, this energy of dissolving. Can we let ourselves dissolve from one form into the formless and then back into another form? This is a form of alchemy, very, very powerful alchemy. It's uncomfortable and most of us don't wield this. Most of us run from this, we deny this, we ignore this, we fucking hate it. It's perfectly described by the old metaphor of the caterpillar into the cocoon dissolving, becoming the butterfly. We hate, we hate the cocoon when it's really happening to us, when it's ego dissolving. What we previously identified as, what brought us a sense of self before, what brought us a sense of safety, security, solidness before, dissolving into, oh my gosh, I can't lean on that anymore. I can't define myself by that anymore. And we're in this cocoon of, we are dissolving. So it's one form, we, we always say, oh yeah, I love change. I want change, I want transformation, bullshit. Bullshit, the human condition is such that we hate change. We, we hate it. We get wildly uncomfortable in it. We run from it. We do crazy things. We dramatize it. 
but we are in a moment in time where there is going to be profound change coming our way. Internal change, self change, worldly change, relationship change is coming our way this year, right? Structures are changing, money stuff is changing. There is a lot of change coming our way. Saturn changing signs, he's been in his home sign for six years. He's going into Pisces, that's dissolving. There are no boundaries. Saturn loves foundations, boundaries, borders, lines, control into the uncontrollable, into boundaryless, into foundationless. That's where Saturn's going. That part of self, we all have a Saturn in us. We all have, right? It's internal, external, it's all, we all have that Saturn in us. That part of self is, is going into the land of dissolving 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 <laughs> some of us um, will ride this with grace and with ease and so this invitation here I'm sharing this with you so that you can be aware and you can make a choice and you can be conscious of it and you can ride this with grace and ease ride it with grace and ease I'm just changing I'm just, I'm in a moment of transformation. I'm in a moment of transition. I'm dissolving out of one form or who I knew myself to be. I'm dissolving. And sometimes I have to sit in the void, in the nothingness to then come into my next form. And I, I'm okay to sit here in the void and the nothingness for as long as I need to. <laughs> Feel into that for yourself. We hate that. We hate that. I hate that spot. Hate it. Hate it. <laughs> I've gotten much better at it. I'm much more conscious of it, right? And just like, well, as long as I need to be here, even if that's the rest of my life. And then usually it shifts way quicker. So here's another point to share with you is um, letting go of control. Saturn is control. Can we let go of control? Pisces, turn it over to something higher. Turn it over to higher wisdom, higher mind, universal mind versus <laughs> my little self that thinks that I have control of so many things. What if, what if you were to let soul in the driver's seat versus ego? What if you were gonna let divine mind steer the ship versus little left brain logical mind? That's what's being asked. And so those of us who've built this capacity or even now, you just becoming aware of, wow, I'm now conscious of this is what's going on and this is how this moment in time, these weeks, these months, going forward, um, this is how I can move through them with more grace and more ease. Um, let me feel for a moment. <laughs> um, yeah, I just get this imagery and I'll share this here because it's not going away. I just get this imagery of like, um, <sighs> there's one way of just going with, you know, kind of going with the flow, going with the wave, going with the change, just like, we're okay. And then there's this other, like, just like fighting this, like, like a bug in a, it's like an ant in a, underneath a cup. And it's just like fighting and it's trying to get out. Like, <laughs> um, so don't be the ant, <laughs> be the bird that just soars on the winds of change. Okay, um, feeling back into what would most serve this moment in time. Developing your capacity to be a channel for grace. Developing your capacity to be a channel for grace. We all are, we all have an antenna. We all, we all, we, we're built with an antenna. We all have this capacity to, uh, let me feel. Virgo full moon is earth priestess. Virgo full moon is earth priestess, right? And so it's this capacity to uh, not just touch into high spiritual states, not just comprehend um, higher mystical wisdom, but to bring it in. It's like hands-on healing. It's like energy healing. It's this capacity and all that's real. All of that channeling in higher vibrations, channeling in grace, right? Channeling in into the physical, that's Virgo. That's one of the gifts of Virgo. Earth priestess, I'm gonna ground it, I'm gonna earth it, I'm gonna bring it in. Um, 
something that uh, we just worked on in one of our circles just, I think yesterday, day before on the first. Uh, it's always interesting to watch which practices arise in uh, different rewilding circles based on the energetics and in this moment, they're never planned. It's just, this is what's here. It's, it's kind of reading the energy of the moment. And this is what's here. And this is the greatest practice that we can be working on. And I'll share those two with you. There were two that came through. Um, those two practices are, <laughs> um, let me just, I just want to feel for a moment because uh, I just got walloped with a lot of energy up my spine. <laughs> um, that's usually something to pay attention to for a second. Um, okay, let's talk about this. Uh, not my plan, but let's talk about this. Um, there is a sacred energy, lots of different sacred energies that we can work with, right? Um, working with the goddesses, the archetypal energies, those are sacred energies. Working with Kundalini is a sacred energy. Working with just consciousness itself is a sacred energy. There are many, many sacred energies, many types of sacred energies, many types of spiritual awakenings um, to be brought in by um, <laughs> a variety of uh, traditions, a variety of different places. There is one that, uh, whoo, um, and I feel this one starting to arise in the world and I feel this one uh, coming into um, more and more of our spaces, more and more of our rewilding circles, our programs, our, our offerings. Uh, and even here, it's coming here. And it's this energy it's a psycho-spiritual power, we could talk about it in that way. And it's one that really illuminates our unique genius. It really illuminates your unique blueprint, your, your, uh, your potentials, your... Um, we talked about this creative renaissance in a previous video. Maybe we'll put a link up here and down below of this year being the creative renaissance. And, and it's this, um, <laughs> the thing that will walk us all home, the thing that will really help to shift what it is that's shifting in the world, whether we're kind of on the thread of new earth or we're on the thread of consciousness is changing in humanity or we're going to the next level of love or whatever, it doesn't matter. but however we want to define it, um, <laughs> um, it's like the thing that will really help us to get there is each of us stepping into who we uniquely are, what we uniquely came in with, our unique gifts, our unique genius, our unique way of being in the world. It's not always a doing. Some of us, yeah, it's going to be a doing. We came in to bring in new sacred technologies. We came in to bring in new inventions, whether that be with light or solar or cars, or I don't care what they are, right? It can be very tangible, very mundane, very physical, or it can be you're here to bring in new psycho-spiritual practices, right? You're here to channel in new spiritual technologies. But it's, it's like, what do you need to do? Where can you go so that that is held in you? That is on offer. That space, it's like get into the spaces, the places, the practices with the people who are really supporting your unique genius, your fullness, not theirs. They're not teaching you a way of being in the world, a way of being a shaman, a way of being an energy healer, a way of being a therapist, a teacher, a mom, or whatever it is that you're called to be in the world. But they're holding this space that, um, that first and foremost, first and foremost supports your uniqueness, your unique genius. These spaces are few and far between right now, right? It drives me batty. Come to this beautiful spiritual circle and I will teach you the thing that I learned from the thing and these are the traditions and this is how we follow it. Never mind 
your inner calling, your inner truth, your inner knowing, your inner wisdom, never mind that. This is how it's always been done and this is how it will always be done. Can you hear Saturn moving into Pisces with this? This is Saturn moving into Pisces. This is Pluto changing signs. This is all of this rapid radical change that's coming right now. I know we're in an astrology video and I'm going off about our unique genius. But to me, that's what all of this is pointing at. All of this is pointing at. And this Virgo full moon, it's like coming to a head. It's coming to a culmination, full moons, right? It's shining a light, coming to a head, coming to a culmination. Um, this next new moon in March is gonna be intense. Pluto changing signs, that's coming. Mars changing signs, that's coming, right? The equinox, the, the balance, these are all very powerful points. Um, the astrological new year when the sun goes into Aries, what the fuck? This is wild, it's beautiful and stunning and amazing, but it's gonna be very ungrounding for some. Um, and so uh, find those, <laughs> those places of light, find those places that, what are you anchoring into? What are you anchoring into? I asked this of a friend and they were like, wow, that's a really powerful question. I've never thought about it that way. I always thought it was like inappropriate attachments or things, I should not be attached to things. But we, it's not about um, attachment, right? Or clinging, it's, what am I anchoring into? And just being so honest and so real about this, you know what, I'm gonna anchor into my unique genius. I'm gonna anchor into my potentials. I'm gonna anchor into my truth. I'm gonna anchor into a, a program, a circle, a book, a modality, a something that helps to support my truth, my unfolding, my unique genius. Or I'm anchored into um, something else, right? Like, that's a great question to ask. What are you anchored into? Uh, because our anchors are what we're tethered to, what we're anchored to, they're about to get ripped out. They will. They're about to get ripped out. They're getting ripped out. They're, and it's going to get more. It's going to get worse. <laughs> but it's all for that dissolving out of current form into formless to create a new form, right? Right? Yeah. That's be it's beautiful. Okay. Let me Whew. I've just gone off on a little bit of a tangent, huh? Okay, let me feel. Whew. I started to talk about this new psycho spiritual power. Um, if you've been hanging out with me for a little while, if you did the week of mystery school, you'll um, have tapped into that the energy that we're working with around it anyways is, uh, <laughs> um, let me feel, how can I say this? It's so wild to um, bring some of this into such a public format, uh, like a YouTube video and to try to uh, <laughs> like bring it down from its mystical truths, you know, when you start to go up to these higher states of consciousness and um, higher mystical truths and higher sacred truths, it's really more about, you must experience them for yourselves because me bringing words to it just um, completely uh, <laughs> dulls it down, tones it down, dumbs it down. Um, but if you've been part of it, we've been working with the energy of the sleeping dragon, right? We've been working on this energy line in our bodies, this, this dragon line in our bodies. and. Um, for those of you who are maybe um, steeped in or know of the kundalini line, that's a line, it's a psycho-spiritual power, the kundalini, waking up the kundalini, right? Waking up kundalini is waking up feminine sacred energy in the body. It's waking up feminine sacred energy in the body. Waking up the dragon line, you're waking up the unified energy of the divine masculine and the divine feminine already in union that's wild that's wild feel into the potential 
that that holds, the creative juju that that holds, the capacities that that holds within ourselves when we wake up. These two powers already combine, already in union, already in union, right? And when you bring masculine and feminine together, what happens? Let's just think about it from a human standpoint. You make a baby, you make a baby. That's creative potency. That's wild creative potency. Now you create that psycho-spiritual power in your body, imagine what we can create from that place. This, this line, this dragon line, where it is the energies of the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine already in union together, waking up in our bodies, in our beings. This is stunning. This is stunning what, um, <laughs> what this activates in us and it brings us to that unique blueprint of what is your greatness what can you do in this world what can you channel in what can you invent how can you love what is your state of being what is your state of consciousness when you are holding both love and consciousness love feminine consciousness masculine simultaneously in union there is a third energy and that just whoosh right out of you right that <laughs> that to me is this new world that to me is what's happening that to me is what there's more and more and more and more if you want to work with that energy there's a retreat happening walking the dragon line it's an in-person retreat we just put the details up i don't know if we'll ever do another in-person retreat this year ever who knows i never know this is the only one that we've got happening um it's called walking the dragon line. It's working with that particular energy. If you're hearing this channel for grace, also working with that energy, but a longer term program, teacher training program, we just opened the doors to priestess training. That's an 18 month program. That is intense. I call it the gauntlet. It's really stripping self, really stripping self, really stripping self, and really coming into our capacity to channel grace in the way in the way that we are uniquely called to do it, not the way I do it or someone else does it or someone else does it. It's holding a space, <sighs> guiding the practices, working with the energies that really open up your uniqueness, your unique way of priestessing in the world, your unique way of channeling grace in the world, whether that be being, being, just the, your state of being is how you're called to be a lighthouse or to be a channel for grace in the world. Just your very state of being, that's it. Or you're called to priestess something in, a new sacred technology, a new invention, a particular way of being a therapist in the world, a particular way of being a yoga teacher in the world. You're, you just channel grace through whatever it is. It doesn't matter the form. It doesn't matter the form, but you're able to channel the, the juju, <laughs> the juju in. Um, so I wanted to share those two offerings. Those are our new, our new offerings, that in-person retreat and the 18-month priestess training program. April is when the retreat happens. May is when priestess training starts. Um, far out, let me feel. I feel like, whoa, those are way too intense for me, Sabrina. Um, way too intense for me. You can actually work with this dragon energy in bones this month. So if you're like, wow, that's singing to me, you can actually join the Rewilding membership. That was the group that just happened on the first. We work live together two hours every month. We work with the dragon energy in bones. Um, and we'll put a link to that up here and, and down below too. That's under 50 bucks to, to join. Um, you can cancel any time, so come do the workshop. And if you don't like it, that's, that's fair enough. Like, that's beautiful. But that transmission is in there for that energy if that's something that's singing to you too. Uh, let me see if I have any other final notes on this full moon to share with you. The dark goddesses. Let's talk about these two dark goddesses. Yeah, because, you know, you know, we got to talk about the dark ladies. Um, the fierce feminine is something that rewilding is founded on, right? Um, eight years ago when rewilding first started, it was very, very heavily steeped in um, bringing in the, the sacred feminine in the forms of the dark goddesses simply because... Let me feel why. 
<laughs> um, to me, it's part of, uh, it's one path that really awakens us to our potentials. It really awakens us to what's hidden. Um, it really awakens us to um, powers that we found hard to step into. We had fear around stepping into this power of ours. Um, we had fear of stepping into this gift, this sacred gift. We had fear of stepping into this particular potential that resides within us. Um, anyways, the two dark goddesses that are dancing on this full moon, in this full moon, is Medusa, who's on the sun. So Medusa on the sun, Lilith, they're, I think they're both one degree off, Lilith on the moon. That's a dance party. That is a serpent, snake, feminine rising, feminine awakening dance party. That is activating ancient primordial feminine, right? That is activating wild feminine, like let's just go for it. It's activating our capacity to be embodied, um, which adds to that Virgo full moon, the earth priestess, but it's like the earth priestess Virgo full moon. She's got like the, the dark lady supporting her. She's got the depth. So Medusa and Lilith, they bring a depth of love, right? So if, if you think about shamanic traditions and it's like, there's the middle world, the upper world and the underworld, and Virgo Earth Priestess, she's carrying the middle world because she'll bring it in. Middle world would be just this mundane daily life. Virgo, brilliant at mundane daily life. And the upper world channeling in higher grace, higher wisdom, more perfection. You can see it oftentimes unfolding as that perfection, purity. Let's, let's purify this. Let's perfect this. That's Virgo. They're stunning, especially when they activate the priestess in them especially when they activate the priestess in them because they will take things to higher and higher and higher and higher and higher vibrations, higher and higher and higher states of consciousness, higher and higher and higher states of love. It's glorious. It's glorious. Um, again, it's, but it's activating that, that, that capacity in self. Most people are scared shitless to become a priestess. Then we've got lots of priestess wounds. You talk about the witch wound, there's a priestess wound, right? Priest, priestess wound. I am so terrified to be a channel for grace. The last time I was a channel for grace, bad shit happened. I misused my power. Lean into that one. So if any of this is resonating with you and, and you're like, I don't know, blah, 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 this is very scary to me. Um, a lot of times you'll have to face the, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of this much light. I'm not worthy of this much psycho-spiritual power. I'm not worthy of the, the light, the love, the grace. That's a big one. Or if I learn to work with this energy, I'll misuse it. I'll hurt people. I'll hurt people. I'll hurt people. Or if I work with this energy, they will hurt me. People will hurt me. People will want to kill me because I have so much light and grace pouring through me, people will want to kill me, all right? And then there's many, many more. Um, by the way, we work with all of that in priestess training. Obviously, we have to go into that territory <laughs> um, um, in that training. That's why it's called the gauntlet. It's called the gauntlet. You go into all of those places. Uh, anyways, um, let me keep feeling into middle world, upper world, Virgo earth priestess has that covered. And then you... And then you bring in Underworld with Medusa and Lilith. So you've got all three, all three worlds activated. All three. So the juice from the Underworld, and if you've worked with me for a while, you'll have worked with the heights and the depths. The heights and the depths. You call up the depths, which is oftentimes considered sacred feminine wisdom. You call down the heights, which is oftentimes considered sacred masculine wisdom. And you work with both of these powers simultaneously in your body. By the way, dragon line also activates this. Dragon line, this is a doorway into dragon line, but dragon line goes to next level. Instead of just bringing down the heights, bringing up the depths, it's like the heights and the depths, they've already unified and now you work with this. This is the third, this is the next step called the threefold path, right? There's the divine masculine, the divine feminine, and then there's the third state, right? There's the third state. Some of you are in mystery school right now. That's called the threefold path. And that's exactly what we're working with. And so just know that working with that dragon line, which again is that in-person retreat, or if you are like, ah, that's a lot. 
like four days with you in person at your house on the Dragon Line in California. I don't know about that. 18 months in a priestess training program with you kicking my butt in a gauntlet. I, I don't know. That's a little bit much for me. Okay, cool. Just come and do a couple hours of workshops. Come and see what the Dragon Line has in store for you, right? Like so open, so easy to access. Just, you're, you're, right, it's all there on demand. You can do it whenever you want. It's right there, it's ready to go. The moment you join, you get the access to the Dragon Line workshop, right? It's called Living Close to the Bone. That's our monthly membership. It's right there, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy. Um, yeah, so I know I've just gone off on another tangent. Let me just feel if there's anything left here. No, I just want to, I just want to send you so much love and so much grounding uh, and so much grace and so much wisdom for this moment in time, right? It's like the rubber's hitting the road. It's, this is a big moment in time and it's coming and it's going to get more fast and more furious and more grounded. It's going to get more earthly. We're going to see more of these changes happening in the physical. They've been happening all in the energetics and they're still doing all of that, but they're going to really start to come in. We'll start to feel them in our bodies. We'll start to watch it out. Take good care of yourself. Take very good care of yourself, right? Really listening. If you need more sleep, give yourself more sleep. If you need to change your diet, change your diet. I would suggest eating foods and drinking things that are full of life force, right? Fresh, fresh vegetable juice, um, fresh fruits, fresh veggie, right? Like I eat a, just aliveness, eat a lot of aliveness, take in a lot of aliveness, a lot of aliveness. We're moving more and more into this energetic state where the energetics of our food are mattering more and more and more and more and more. And so like I leave my, my water sit out in the sun in a glass bottle. It's so weird. I have an RO filter, right? So I, all of my water comes through, it's filtered. I then leave it sit out in the sun because it changes the energetics of the water. So it's not coming through this dark, dank um, water filter, which has been filtered from, you know, this, the counties, blah, 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 through this pipe and this pipe. And it's just gross and horrible and blah, who knows what's going on down there filters out and then it sits in the beautiful energetics of my home in the sunshine in these beautiful glass bottles and it changes the molecular structure of the water thus it gives me <laughs> different juju when i drink it i know that that's gone way far um, but that's just a, a tangible thing that seems very silly but very much supports my system my salads i'll give you another like little weird one um, so I pull everything out of the fridge because it's been in the dark fridge. Like what salad likes to sit in a dark, cold fridge? That's terrible. So I pull all of the good stuff out, right? Like the salad, the sprouts, the tomatoes, the peppers, the whatever I'm putting in my salad that day. And then I put it in this big glass bowl and then I go put that in the sunshine and I leave it sit there while I meditate for an hour. And my salads are healthier. They're more nutritious. <laughs> And bless them, right? Bless them. We have such capacity to channel grace and goodness. So even these seemingly silly little rituals, um, they have profound influence. They have profound influence, right? We are much more powerful than we know. We are much more powerful than we know. So activate those psycho-spiritual powers. Activate that power in you, whatever it is. Maybe it's, it's in some of these programs with me. Maybe it's somewhere else. Whatever it is, just follow your heart. Trust your intuition. Trust your guidance. It's always speaking. It's always, that's the other thing that we worked on in that membership this, this month is listening, listening to intuition, listening to higher wisdom. Like the spirit's always talking. The divine is always talking. It's always talking. It's always talking. How do we listen? How do we listen? Let's practice that. And so we practice that. So along with working with the dragon energy and living close to the bone, we also practice listening, listening. Like, how can I hear? How can I hear more divine wisdom? How can I hear higher guidance? How can I hear deeper intuition? How can I hear? It's always talking. It's always talking. It's always talking. Let me hear. 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 All right. Um, so just listening and following, following when you get an intuition, following. That's where we fall on our faces. Right? It's coming in a dream. You get it in a flash while walking the dog. You journal it. Right? It, like it's coming. And then we don't follow it. We don't follow. See if you can say yes more. You get the hit, yes. You get the hit, yes. I have this practice that I do. Um, sometimes it'll be so obscure, right? So wildly out there. Just what? And then it's like, that's all I've got. 
That's the deepest truth that I can get to. It makes zero sense to myself. I have no idea how I'm going to make that happen, but it's all I've got. It's all I've got to go on is my deepest knowing. And this to me feels like my deepest truth, my deepest knowing, my greatest step forward makes zero sense, but it's all I've got. I have been using that for years in my life and it has created crazy shit, right? It has created all the rewilding. It has created this beautiful home that I get to live in. It has created wild, wonderful bodies of work. It has created loves that I couldn't even imagine. It's created health in my body that I could not even have imagined. It's created, it's, it's, it, it. all right, enough. Enough about me and my random little silliness. My gosh, I hope that this conversation served. Um, I just, I just love you all so much. Thank you for letting me go wild um, and not be limited to astrology. I really need that. Um, if I'm going to be speaking about, you know, if I, like, you got to walk the talk. I have to walk the talk or I get really unwell, <laughs> really unwell. And so if the talk is step into your unique genius, step into your unique genius, and I'm not doing it, someone should blow me up, right? Like fire me, kick me out, <laughs> get me out of here. All right. Um, drop a note in the comments. I'd love to hear from you really and truly. I've been MIA for a little while, setting up priestess training and um, setting up this in-person retreat here at my house. And so I've been MIA for a little while and it'd be beautiful to connect in with you. I'm always in the comments for the first couple days after this comes out. Drop a note, just like, Sabrina, you're insane. I don't care what the note is. Like, or fuck, this was really powerful. Or I'm super crazy nervous. Or hey, I'm joining Inner Circle and I'm gonna go check out the dragon line. Or ha, priestess training is calling to me. By the way, there's a one hour video on that priestess training um, information page that is more of a transmission than anything. So if that path calls to you, but you're like, I don't think training program is for me, that video might bring you something. That, just that video alone, um, listening to it, it's one hour. So sit down, have a cup of tea, hang out with me, um, and, and just, just listen. Also, if you wanna hear more about the dragon energy, the video on the retreat page um, talks 25 minutes about that dragon energy. So if you just want some free shit, <laughs> just some free shit. There's an hour and 25 minutes more of free shit on um, priestess training and dragon video. They're not sales things. It's really just, here's the energetics and I hope this brings you something. If it resonates, cool, let's do retreat or let's do train together. But I really want to give, 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 give. Because the giving is also the receiving for me. So, um, in that, uh, I love you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for your comments below. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for all of the things that you do. Um, it's just really beautiful to be able to be here with you in this way. All right, so much love to you. <laughs>